Hi folks, I'm Mike King, Global Director of Emergency Communication Solutions here at Esri. Proactive PSAPs, the public safety answering points, and command and control centers around the world recognize the need to have 3D solutions as part of their next generation services. First responders, quite frankly, need maps that represent their environment in 3D. The flat two-dimensional map no longer provides the necessary information without a whole lot of interpretation and some second guessing. I've invited my colleague, Phil Milkey, to show you some of the ways in which Esri is bringing three-dimensional mapping to first responders and to the PSAP. You know, Phil came to Esri with real life public safety experience and he joined a team of scientists who are working around the clock to bring you configurable solutions, things for police, fire, EMS, and emergency management. So Phil, why don't you show us around a little bit? Thank you, Mike. So it's my pleasure to speak to you folks to share some of my uh, previous experience and current direction to really help to establish the way that Esri is helping to support uh, next-gen 911 requirements, especially when it comes to preparing the uh, PSAPs for 3D GIS. So uh, in a lot of cases, the next-gen 911 requirements have actually realized a lot of the value that GIS has brought to the table. If it's either working with multiple polygon uh, GIS layers to understand the cross-referencing of jurisdictions and jurisdictional lines or managing uh, data through intuitive workflows and solutions that help to understand what's the most recent set of addressing information that we have and how to maintain and update that. Uh, we've seen mobile GIS that's uh, that's been a part of the uh, field workflows that are responsible for collecting more accurate and precise information for dispatching. And we've also seen the way in which we were able to use that information for really specific purpose-driven dashboards and applications that help to answer the mail on specific issues and problems. Now, through all this, GIS has been helpful for the process of collaborating. Uh, and in many cases here, your dispatch organization is going to be working lockstep with forensics, crime analysis, and your, your investigations unit. The organization speaks the language using mapping. And uh, location is one of those unique key identifiers that helps to bring everything together to verify incidents and ultimately allocate the appropriate resources. So now Nina is defining requirements where our mobile providers are going to be providing not only X and Y like they currently do, but also Z attributes and information. So that lead you to answer some questions or in, in that that's what's the height above ground for that emergency call. So what would that matter in terms of, you know, what kinds of equipment we need to be able to supply? What, what floor is the caller call, calling from? What's the unit potentially? What's the context for understanding that location? How do I get up to that specific floor? Uh, and understanding all of those things ultimately leads you thinking more about how we develop, utilize, and maintain a 3D geographic information system. This is an example here where we are mapping 911 calls in 3D in order to meet those next gen 911 requirements. Receiving X, Y, and Z, but not only that, the locational uncertainty, both from horizontal and vertical uncertainty, helps to give us that impression as far as what's that overall potential area that that incident in that call could be occurring in. And that really ends up mattering in terms of the response strategies that are associated with it. And this is all aided by a three-dimensional GIS here that, that's being served through ArcGIS Online and Enterprise. We're able to maintain the interior models. And in this case, we're seeing the San Diego Convention Center. We're just slicing through that using uh, the slice tool that's available in Scene Viewer. And we're able to view each one of these individual incidents as they're coming in, aided by the context of a, the visualization, but not only that, with real information, what's the altitude, what's the uncertainty, so that we can ultimately find the right kinds of, uh, the right kinds of resourcing to uh, respond to this and to make sure that we appropriately route that with all the information that's necessary for that specific call. Here in this case, we're, we're taking a closer look here at understanding, you know, potentially some of these incidents could be occurring below ground. All of this is supported by ArcGIS, and ArcGIS is a comprehensive 3D GIS. 
we've seen 3D that's exploded in a lot of different ways based off of the demand for data and specific experiences. So, you know, years, it's been years that cities have been collecting and utilizing LIDAR in different ways. And you need better viewers, more quick viewers, more viewers that can ultimately gather the value that's associated with that data and all the information that you're maintaining in order to be able to answer some questions. We've been get, getting and producing better analysis and simulation tools, few sheds, line of sight analysis that are now currently available in our configurable app templates. And we've also been able to support our reality capture in real time uh, uh, data story. Along with this, we're, we're finding new data sources that we're able to utilize, and we'll take a look at kind of what the future of 3D in a PSAP may hold. So we are able to performantly serve large volumes of data. In this case, this is the entire state of Connecticut is serving uh, their LiDAR data through a point cloud scene layer. It's just a layer type that we have directly available within uh, ArcGIS Online and Enterprise where we're able to consume and produce a point cloud scene layer that contains the colorization of that last data. And this is ultimately being shared not only just so that the state can put this out to folks. But this is also ultimately um, viewable for all of the smaller agencies that have been a part of that regional 3D GIS program that have paid into the production of this LiDAR data. LiDAR can also show classification, meaning is that particular point, is that vegetation in green, ground in brown, or is it a building in red or water in blue? Now that comes to matter when you're looking at a specific tool set that we offer here. So extracting value from that LiDAR data is ultimately what our main focus is with this 3D base map solution. And this is, let me give you a sense as far as what that workflow can look like. So this is a ArcGIS Pro task base workflow. And what that means is that you'll be guided through a wizard that will step you through the process of working with very simple data, starting only with LIDAR and building footprint information. You're able to classify that LIDAR, ground, building, or vegetation. You're able to build a precision ground model, which matters when you're trying to identify what that height above ground is. And you're also trying to define, or you're also able to define building heights from that LIDAR data appropriately shape the roof forms for that for the for the the footprint data so that you're ultimately extracting buildings from lidar and then you're able to separate those buildings into level and as a plus you can extract the vegetation from lidar for visualization for lidar or for uh, line of sight types of strategies and all of this can then be published into arcgis online or enterprise so that your cad system can use this as the visualization mechanism and a way to identify where those callers are coming from, and to ultimately see you know, which floor that, that, uh, that call may be coming from. Let's take a look at some data that was created from that 3D base map solution. This is Austin, Texas. And so taking a closer look at this, what we're able to see, this is all the extracted end product from that. And this here is the LIDAR that was used to produce this 3D base map. Pretty common data that you're able to find here, especially working with your local GIS department. And you see green as vegetation, red for the buildings, and we're taking a closer look at some of the buildings that have been extracted from this in order to understand really what's the end goal of that 3D base map solution, providing you a mechanism to understand all of the data that you, you're able to produce and extract from LiDAR. So this, again, coming back to that elevation scenario, this is what matters, when, especially if you're trying to get within plus or minus three meters accuracy. Having an accurate ground model, even though Esri supplies one for you, having one that's built off of your own local jurisdiction's data can get you as precise as you need to be. We're also able to extract individual floor volumes from that uh, using that 3D base map solution and knowing how many uh, floors there are within each one of these buildings. You can cut these up to the appropriate mechanism and at the appropriate heights in order to use this as volumes that, that ultimately provide the right level of information. So looking towards the future a little bit, some of the other data types that you might be able to consume here is data that comes directly from the building planning and architecture design here. This is a building scene layer. This is data that's extracted from Revit, 
or IFC, what architects use to ultimately design these buildings. And if you have access to this data, you can geo-reference it and then use it as a very precise mechanism to understand all of the, all of the units that are within this building, all the other associated information, details about the doors, about uh, where your NOx boxes may be, what the HVAC system looks like, in this case, what the electrical system looks like. It's about as detailed as you can possibly get, and we can serve an entire city of this kind of data to make it useful for the way in which first responders are able to understand what they're responding to in the environment that they're walking into with the most accurate information possible. This collectively helps to develop a better sense about how PSAPs and how uh, can work with the rest of the organization for response strategies. Here we have a scenario where we have integrated mesh uh, that is a, a basically the skin of the earth model. And on top of this, we have a, a response template that we're showing all of our units that have been responding to a specific diesel spill scenario so that we can see all of the, uh, the assets that are on the ground, understand and search for specific types or to uh, find all of this information. And this is an example of uh, something that has been developed here within, uh, within Experience Builder in order to be able to give a collective common operating picture that's aided by the context of 3D. So we see 3D as really having a major role in the way that PSAPs will evolve here into the future, in the way that ultimately GIS is modernized in order to be able to support and answer some of the questions that are ultimately only answerable with 3D data. Thank you very much for your time and interest, and we look forward to answering your questions. Thanks, Phil. It is amazing to me how much capability is already available for our first responders and the communities they serve. I'm so pleased to see the amount of effort that Esri has put into the next generation movement, and I really look forward to what lies ahead. Well, folks, if you'd like more information about the solutions that Phil has shown today, please reach out to your local Esri account manager or contact us here at the public safety team. Please watch our other videos explaining how GIS benefits the PSAP and command and control. And please reach out to us for more information if you need it. You can find us at esri.com 911. And most importantly, thanks for watching and thanks for standing on the front lines in all of our defense.